Greg Yoke, what's up with the Chico Army? We have euphoria right now. The markets, they're ripe. It's a special thing to experience. You're on top of the world. You can do no wrong until it happens. The rug is pulled. Don't ever be caught slipping because these DeFi protocols you see popping up daily, they are being developed at the speed of light and there is always a period of darkness. Well, you're ready to get real dark because it's time for Chico Crypto. Crypto, it's new, it's young, it's still a baby. Granddaddy BTC is only 12 years old. It's the first decentralized currency that had to integrate itself into centralized systems. And those first years were rough for BTC, let me tell you that. Battered and bruised, Bitcoin barely made it out alive. Nearly two years after the initial launch in January of 2009, Jeff Garzik, early core dev, posted this on Bitcoin Talk. The value out in this block number 74,638 is quite strange with the screenshot of the code. Jeff Garzik in August of 2010 just discovered the largest Bitcoin bug in its history, an inflation bug. An unknown attacker had discovered a way to create themselves some extra BTC. How many extra? 184 billion more BTC. If you know the supply is hard capped at 21 million, you understand the gravity of this. Had the attacker been more modest, setting their sights a little lower, it might have been not discovered before the damage was done. Jeff spotted it within 90 minutes and it was patched and corrected within five hours by Satoshi Nakamoto. So what's the point I'm trying to get across here? Well, these bugs can lay dormant in protocols for some time and attackers are just waiting for the right moment to exploit. Remember Ravencoin, aka Overstock Coin. I'm sure many of you don't, but those around in 2017 and 2018 do. Much hype with Raven. It did well. A new Bitcoin of sorts is what they said. Top tier developers had created a next level proof of work protocol. Well, Raven suffered a similar fate to BTC, but they weren't able to notice in time. In June of 2020, yeah, over two years after its initial launch in January of 2018, it was exploited with an inflation bug that they were not able to catch and the attacker was able to mix and send the coins to the exchanges. You need another example? How about Stellar Lumen? Stellar launched in June of 2014. Three years later, in June of 2017, on its dang anniversary, the attacker exploited it with an inflation bug for 2.2 billion lumens. As we can see from the Blocks article, the attacker exploited it 110 times times and Stellar didn't catch it. They had to burn from their community reserves to make up for it. So today all these new chains, Cardano, Binance Smart Chain, Elrond, Algorand, Tezos, EOS, and even the ones I like, Polkadot or the untested ETH2 and Proof of Stake, they may have dormant bugs waiting to be exploited. That is just a warning as the past tells us it happens even to big names like Stellar. And that is just at base protocol level, bugs, hacks, and the like. It's easier to exploit when smart contracts are involved, widening the attack surface, as smart contracts are contracts that do things with your assets that have value. So we gotta back up once again to the early Bitcoin days. Bitcoin is limited in its smart contract set, as it does not support Turing complete smart contracts. This means BTC is limited in what it can do. Obviously, it can't do DeFi, but this meant in its early days, no smart contracts, Bitcoin had to bend the knee to centralized systems. Of course, the first Bitcoin transactions were P2P between two anonymous people, as that was the only way to get it done. But eventually, online trading venues were created that were centralized at the core because they had to be. The first popular Bitcoin exchange hit the scenes was Mt. Gox. What happened to it? Founded in 2010, hacked in 2011, and then exploited, hacked to its death in 2014. You follow a timeline of hacks and exploits on exchanges. Yeah, it's crazy how often it happens, even to the centralized entities and again, big names like Binance. Never forget, they wanted to reorg the Bitcoin blockchain because of that exploit. So now let's fast forward to today. DeFi, it's surging and a blurging because of Turing complete smart contracts on Ethereum. Looking at TVL, total value locked up in Ethereum DeFi, it has surged and crossed the $40 billion mark. 
Shoot, I remember back in 2019 getting to the $1 billion level with DeFi. It was a major thing. I should know. I covered it back then with this video posted one and a half years ago. Let's watch now when I still had my long hair. So how is DeFi going to kick off the bull run and what are my favorite DeFi projects? Well, DeFi got pretty much officially launched during the crash from 20K and it has still been able to push up to nearly 700 million USD locked up, creating its own mini bull run in a bear market. But Tyler, DeFi has launched and those tokens haven't done a 10X yet. Are you sure DeFi will kick it off? Well, no, I'm never 100% sure, but I can make an educated guess as to why. I mean, just looking back at what kicked off the 2017 run, the ERC-20 token contract and ICOs. Well, the technology behind this was the ERC-20 token contract. And this was introduced all the way back in 2015 by programmer Fabian Vogelsteller. It wasn't until two years later that its implications to fundraising became fully realized and the bull kicked off. So we are in a similar state with DeFi right now. All the contracts, infrastructure, and protocols are in their initial stages. Give it a couple of years and the implications will really be understood. So we are at that stage I was talking about today. Two years since DeFi made its first strides. Many of those DeFi tokens have 10 x and beyond. Chico called and predicted that like no one else could. But I'm also calling and predicting something else. And it's not a bright green pastures outlook like I had back then. It's reality. With this acceleration to beyond 40 billion TVL, 2021 will be the year of the great DeFi hack or exploit, where billions of dollars will be drained. Why do I think this? Well, according to the block, in 2020, there were 15 major DeFi hacks, where $120 million was exploited, with the two largest being $25 million and $24 million. As we can see, big DeFi names, BZX, even Uniswap, Bancor, Balancer, Acropolis, Origin, Stablecoin, Origin, Dollar, and even that pickle got hit for over 19 million. All of those DeFi hacks from big DeFi names, they all happened in 2020 when the TVL of DeFi ranged from $1 billion to $16 billion. That TVL is now over $40 billion in just two months and over 2x, and it's showing no signs of slowing down. What's happening today? Even more teams are popping up daily with yield-bearing farming assets swallowing up people's Ethereum and ERC-20 assets. Teams more inexperienced than the teams that got hacked in 2020, and many of the teams fully anonymous. And the man himself, who created the protocol for DeFi to flourish, warned of this in June of last year, during the DeFi summer hype. Let's listen to Vitalik's words on the Unchained podcast. Instead of going down that rabbit hole, I actually want to ask you more about your criticisms of DeFi. What are your main mm. criticisms and concerns? Hmm. I think uh, one big one is just that a lot of people are underestimating smart contract risk. I feel like there's a lot of people that are just not fully taking this into account in some of their calculations. And, you know, they might think that, oh, okay, it's been safe for a while. It's been safe for a while. And these projects are audited. And like a lot of these DeFi projects really have like done a, a great job of uh, auditing themselves and just doing a way better job of that and learning from the mistakes of the DAO and all of those things. But at the same time, you know, are we safe enough that we can promise a chance of breaking of less than 2% a year? I don't, I don't think we can get there yet. Right. So like that's one thing. And so I think, uh, and if the main takeaway from that criticism, I guess, is that DeFi is still fine, but like don't act like it's a place where you should advocate for a lot of regular people to put uh, to put their life savings into. So did you hear what Vitalik said? DeFi can't promise a 2% chance of breaking. That is a fact. Many of the protocols, they can't. I predict with a strong conviction that DeFi is going to reach $100 billion TVL this year. Most likely during the summer of 2021, that level, it will be reached. What is a 2% break of $100 billion locked in DeFi? That's two billion dollars, billions of dollars getting exploited. So is DeFi going to 
break by 1% to 2% in 2021? Well, at the rate things are moving, I would say yes. Of course, you have Ethereum DeFi, the hundreds of dApps and smart contracts sucking up TVL, but now we have the other chains, some with their own smart contracts, creating DeFi ecosystems, more smart contracts, more languages, more TVL. When it's turning complete, the attack surface grows. To who and when is it going to happen? The great DeFi hack of 2021. Well, I'm no Miss Cleo, future predictor, so I can't give you that. But it can happen to even the best. 2020 is a pure example of that. How to protect assets in DeFi then, Tyler? Well, I never go all in on a DeFi project. I never put my eggs in one place in DeFi because if all your eggs are in one place that gets exploited, all your eggs, they go away. So I'll leave you all with this question to ponder on. Who came first, the Chico or the egg? Cheers, I'll see you next time.